RVers, welcome back. And good one here for camping families, maybe upgrading from a no slide camper or getting your very first RV. This could be an option for you. This is a member of the Tracer LE series, which is uh, just a simple, straightforward Joe Friday, just the facts, ma'am kind of camper. If what you're looking for is simple, lightweight, less expensive, this is a dynamite uh, option for you right here. And what's crazy is because they don't fluff it up with, like they don't do anything that doesn't matter. So as a result, this RV's empty dry weight is less than 5,000 pounds, which means its total uh, cargo capacity is over about 2,500 pounds. That is fantastic. There are so many small campers or big campers that just have crap for cargo capacity. And that's not a problem that you're running into here on this one. This gets the job done nicely in that regard. You can actually, you can you can pack big and camp small in this thing because it's not too big. For a, a, a lot of half tons, this would be a good fit potentially. For the really large class SUVs, this might be a good fit, which means you'll have plenty of seating for the family when you're going down the road. That's something a lot of people don't think about is how do you get all the people there when a camper sleeps a bunch? Well, uh, you know, a big SUV, you can do that. Underbelly's enclosed on this. It's got a walkable roof, but it again, it doesn't do anything it doesn't have to. It doesn't have a TV. It doesn't have have a ladder it doesn't have a lot of those uh, fluff features but the thing is it weighs less but costs about the same as a stick and tin camper for something laminated so if you're like yeah i'm spooked about her i just don't want that tin skin because maybe you live in hail country or you just want something that's easier to clean it's a good option now this is a very straightforward floor plan like a lot of manufacturers have something like this oh no <laughs> of course it really helps when i point the camera the correct direction <laughs> so stupid obviously i don't edit my videos too awful much anyway it's a floor plan that's very common in the industry and it, like i said it, it's it's very straightforward it doesn't do every like it doesn't it's not a kind of camper you're gonna sit inside on a rainy day and watch a ton of tv um, there's a regular viewer who I appreciate, who voices their opinion very regularly, Mr. Steve Z, is going to say, you know, oh, look, another RV that has nowhere to sit on a rainy day except an uncomfortable dinette. And he's correct. This is definitely uh, more of a fair weather camper. You've got enough space to feed everybody inside, and that's about it. Now, the main floor is carpetless. You may have noticed that it's, it's not quite a floor flush slide, and it is a carpeted slide. Um, and I, I realized after I captured all my uh, x-ray kitchen footage, I never opened up this chunk of space right here. And that's that's nice space. I don't want you to realize, I, I don't want you to miss that, basically, because these L-shaped counters, sometimes under that L, there's no way to get to that space. So at least they open it up. I do also appreciate like little touches, little radius work here and there. Now, that being said, they didn't throw any kind of flare and fluff stuff in this that they, they didn't have to. This is a, a straightforward family camper, not a ritzy, glitzy, big time glamper. And I about had a heart attack. I looked behind that stove top and I saw what I thought was like a gray cushion. And I, I'm like, there's absolutely no way they put flammable stuff right next to it. And they, they didn't. It's just a, it's a wood cover accent uh, behind that stovetop right there. That is a big 12 volt compressor fridge, uh, by the way. Uh, double over double bunks in the back. Pretty straightforward standard fare uh, in that regard. And that is not any sort of um, cargo bunk. It doesn't flip up or anything like that. I think there's uh, a water heater or something back there. Something else that's kind of nice is both the upper and lower bunks have their own light and set of USB plugs. But what I really like about this light is its location. It's located um, over here where you, as the adult, can turn it off and on very easily for when it's, you know, lights out kids time. Now, check out the lights in here. See how they're they're kicking themselves on as we walk in? It's actually one of the, the few little kind of toy features that I really like in these. They do uh, dual motion lights in the bathroom. Now, you can just turn those off. You can put them in motion mode. You can also just click them on. So if you're in the shower with the curtain closed and they don't pick up any motion, they don't end up turning the lights out on you there. But uh, I, I like that feature for like nighttime use, you know, because little kids can't always reach tall light switches. Now you saw some pretty decent space around that toilet there. But one of the other major surprises on this is it has a huge shower. That corner seat over there can be handy for some folks, but... Um, sometimes, you know, when you got the loofah out and you're scraping your shins and getting yourself clean, it's kind of nice to be able to prop your leg up. Or when Uncle Gary shaved his shins, perhaps, you know, those, that can be a, a handy benefit for him. Now, 
it was kind of cool that they had both a skylight and a separate power vent fan on a budget focused camper like this if they would have combined the two i wouldn't have faulted them for it um uh but the camper is six and a half foot tall and you do have to step up a little bit into that kind of shower enclosure so as a result that will mean if you're a little over six foot like me your head's going to be uh in the bubble there it just all kind of depends on your personal stature i do suppose now over here it you know when you're looking at the rest of the kitchen you don't see a dedicated pantry thankfully you do have a full standing pantry or it could be used as like maybe dresser storage for the bunk area now there is storage all the way below the uh, dinette but they don't give you any obvious way to get to it and you may have been wondering if you're looking at the dinette why was that additional cushion sitting on the back of it well <laughs> that's a mouse tool it's a secret tool that'll help us later <laughs> <laughs> need to get caffeinated i'm slap happy today my point there is that's a little dinette sleeper conversion cushion because the the cushions that wrap around the back of the dinette seating they don't cover that table exactly they include an additional little table to do that for you now it is nice to have sliding pocket doors and not like you know just a accordion curtains or anything and it, this is a very very simple entertainment setup they they didn't go any further than they had to here again with not really any way to directly view the the tv I don't know that that was the wrong decision. You may have noticed a light flicker over here. That was the motion light by the door. That'll kick back on as we get a little bit closer. Um, <clears throat> no secret mouse control needed there, goof. <laughs> Disney's going to come after me one of these days. Sorry. You can put a, 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 a swing arm mount on that, like if you want to be able to face over toward the dinette a little bit. And I'm not going to call that a shoe garage. That's a flip-flop stop right there. Um, it, it, I would almost rather... They had shortened up those doors and done a little bit bigger uh, shoe garage in that area. There goes that motion activated light. This is interesting. You've got uh, a couple accent lights directly uh, above the, well, not accent lights, but like just light lights. But this light right here that's above the bed, so you don't have to climb on the bed to get to it. The light switch is out here, but it's outside the bedroom. So if you got the privacy door shut, the kids could actually flick that light on for you. <laughs> Now, there are some TV hookups here, um, but you might notice there's a, a pair of sliding doors. Um, there are some TV backers. They're, they're kind of tricky to find sometimes, but there are some that they mount flat behind the door, and then they stick out, and your TV actually mounts out here. Uh, that kind of thing does exist. But I do like the positive latch system that they have there to keep those doors from jiggle banging around. Just instead of like the, the, the plastic strap with a button on it that a lot of brands use, and I get that it gets the job done. It's just a nice extra little touch. You may notice though, um, other than the bunks, like there's not a whole lot in the way of USB plugs here. There are household outlets on both sides of the bed, and you can always get like an extension or a conversion. And this is a Camp Queen but it doesn't smash all the way up uh, against the wall. So if you did want to slot a true queen bed in here, it is sized uh, to be able to do that. And to give you just a direct view of that backbreaker death wafer, there you go. That's what she looks like, um, you know, when it's propped up in the storage mode there. Primetime does a lot of those like piano hinge style bed lifts where you still have to physically lift it. You don't have gas struts to assist you, but you don't have to like stand there holding it while you're trying to get into the storage or anything like that i haven't closed the slide on this one with the peninsula countertop i'm kind of curious to see what the travel access turns out to look like oh buddy it's a close one right here because the thing is it's a full three foot deep slide but you see how the dinette sticks out a little bit past then when you have the uh, peninsula that juts out a little bit it gets awfully tight between here now, that being said, with my chicken legs, if I tiptoe, here we go it, I can ooh, just squeeze my way through there. I don't have to do the Dukes of Hazard yeehaw butt scoop boogie to get past that thing. But the other thing to consider is this is a cable slide system, which does allow you to open the slide partially without screwing it up. So if you want to open it just a little bit to slip through here for a quick travel potty stop, if you don't have chicken legs like mine, you can do it. I'm not saying that's ideal or anything or that you should have to expect to do that. I'm just letting you know what it is and what it isn't so you can just be in the best, most educated position possible to determine how you want to spend your money. And this camper boasts some 
excellent towability factors. As you see right there, we're less than 30 feet. Uh, we're only about 7,500 pounds maximum weight GVW. And that's really the number you should be concerned with when you're pairing up a tow vehicle. It's not the empty dry weight, but the maximum fully loaded weight uh, because that's what you're legally required to be able to handle there. Now, uh, again, you've got laminated walls and floor. It does have a wood-built roof, but that, I mean, frankly, even a lot of luxury fifth wheels have that because it's a great way for the RV to, the RVs typically need at least one area for stress to express itself. You need one zone in the RV that is designed to be able to, to, to twist and flex a little bit, and that'd be the roof of this camper. Um, I was actually very happy to see this. It has a surprisingly generous front pass-through compartment, and the aluminum uh, framework under that bed right there was kind of a nice surprise. Now it occurs to me, I, I think I said 7,500 pound GVW, it's 7,600, which is not a major variance, obviously, but I also don't want to confuse people and I want to try to put, uh, you know, easily understood, accurate info out there. Now, right under that front awning arm, you got yourself a drunken uncle leash latch uh, that is actually handy for more than just the pets. Like if you got some lawn furniture outside or some bicycles outside, silly as it sounds, just doing anything to secure those to the RV. It's, uh, it's amazing how that discourages people from just messing with stuff that they shouldn't. You know, it's like the locks on the camper door. These things are not fortresses, but the locks are there to keep an honest person honest. I am giving them some serious credit though, because I've said, you know, this is a camper that doesn't do anything, doesn't have to, but it gives us some good function features like that patio awning. They nailed that awning, I think. They they put a, a very respectably generously sized one over here. Now, it doesn't have anything like a camp kitchen or uh, anything like that. Again, just a simpler series, but not everybody cares about all that, you know? Some people just would prefer to cook on the fire. And the number one question I get with camp kitchens is, can I get the camper without that? And typically, no, not from the factory. Very rarely is it actually an option. And this one instead just comes with an extra outdoor storage locker right here. And I'd be kind of curious. I always like to know how people would move in. Like, what would you put in here? Um, this kind of strikes me as either like picnic table stuff or maybe um, the, uh, you know, if you got little kids, like the little bubble machine or something like that. One of those, man, I could watch my daughter when when she was a little bit, oh, now, I'm, now I'm feeling homesick, but um, I'd just watch my daughter for hours when she was younger, just bop around giggling, not a care in the world, popping bubbles. That is... That's living right there, man. That's the good stuff. Now, it does have a walkable roof, but again, zero factory allowance for a ladder, which I feel like at least give us one of those brackets up on the roof for one of those uh, portable telescopic ladders or something like that. And this one doesn't do it, but I really feel like that would be a very low cost way to eliminate a potential concern for some folks. I was happy to see though, uh, a couple things over here. It does have a full hot cold outside utility shower and it is a single sewer outlet uh, just poking down from that underbelly. But another thing that kind of surprised me, the gate valves themselves were protected up in the be uh, belly. And on a camper like this, I just, I don't know, I didn't expect that. Now, as always, I'll leave you some links in the video description. You can see where we have one of these parked and what we're asking on a given day, but also some similar floor plans. Like, uh, to really kind of compare, J-Flight makes, uh, I think it's called a 242, basically the same floor plan. If you're looking for something a little more razzmatazz, Freedom Express makes a 257, which is actually, I, I've always liked that camper a lot. Take a look at one of those, see which one works for you, and... Whatever the case, we're going to be here and we're not going to hit you with hidden fees because we don't do that stuff. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.